I mean, I understood my, my mom and my dad and our, my tias and tios, all of them, by doing my own personal research and taking it back line by line. The most surprising thing was that we could do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, most yeah. of the people say, well, you can't really do it because if you're doing Mexican research, all the records are burned. Well, actually, no. Our records go back a thousand years. If you look for them. If you look for them, I didn't want to. I didn't want to uh, oh. interrupt. We came back. We're back at Cafe California. Uh, it was analyzed that not acknowledging or not owning our European roots and how we are impacted by your is about as healthy psychologically as hating one of your parents. How do you regard your European roots? I think. I mean, I can't deny. You hate one I, of your no, parents. No, I don't hate. Do one you? Of do parents. you? <laughs> no, I don't. But I mean, I I have to acknowledge that I have that I have different mixtures of blood within me, right? I've made the conscious it's decision. It's very hard to find a pure Indian, although yeah. in Chiapas they're yeah. finding some. Yeah, you know, Still and I and, the and I don't have a problem with that. But now my struggle as a person. My struggle as a person is not to go back to El Estado de España and say I want to be a uh, Hispanic or I want to be Spanish like you. you because find I out. don't because I don't because I live here and my family is going to live here and all my children are going to live here and I want my children and I want all the little children that I work with to have an identity because they're well, being that, you're going to find out what it is by doing the research. I no, mean I, I, I have the, the research and I have the research and I know that I have European blood within me. Okay. okay. But does but your you identity know have to do with being American too? See, I'm trying to leave the ethnicity am, and the blood out of it. Okay, you're I just am as American. American as I am. I am. But that's been it's the problem yeah. is that you've left out the yeah. ethnicity right. and yes. historically. Can you balance those things? Yes, and you his, can. I'm proud to be an American. I understand that much of what we have, particularly in our early history, did come from Europe. A great deal of what makes us great is a result of uh, Western civilization. There's no getting around that. Uh, a few years ago, they started bashing dead white European males as if our founding fathers made no contribution. What the heck is that but, but ethnic but, warfare? But you have I to mean, understand what kind of contribution warfare. they made. You know, you have to see the acquisition, the acquisition of the Southwest United States, how that impacted my family, how that impacted many other right. families. But you and I live in the here and now because everybody can go back in their nation's history, their ethnic history, their racial I'm history, and find similar examples. I'm living in this nation. That's the problem. Examples. I'm living in this nation where my history has been cut destroyed, erased, Fair and Fair enough. Burned. Up to a but, point, I agree it, with you. But, but your history is also now. American history. It, it is no, now okay. coming out. My history, my history, I have no problem with teaching <laughs> American we'll history to children. I have no problem saying... But you can be this aggressive with children? I mean, don't you think this may be a, co a college level or, or something? No, I mean, no. there's nothing very early. Can, can, let's I, can I use Mimi. myself as an ex example? Go right ahead, Because it, it <laughs> makes the point. Okay, we'll go to I started doing my... My mother's name is Chapa, Aurora Chapa. I started doing her research, took the line back, to 1630, who came in from Genoa. It was a Juan Batista Chapa that came in from Genoa into, into Mexico, Veracruz, in 1630. That's an Italian line that I have. My grandmother is Petra Farias. That is a Portuguese line. My name, Lozano, actually goes back to the Basque area in the 1500s with my Lozano, so which is Basque. a Basque name. I mean, you're it was. Your Basque myth. It's just, you know, and, and the more research I did, the more it told me that I'm a global person. We Doctor, are all global people. We are global people. Uh, Doctora, uh, look at your skin. Uh, you obviously have some European blood. Uh, what is your take on how we should interpret our European background? Well, I think that, again, we have to place it in context. And I think I'm going to refer it to preparing teachers and how teachers can do this. And also referring to the comment about the dead white, you know, scholar, the dead white uh, writers. Mm -hmm. And that was the work of Edie Hirsch, who said that to be culturally literate in this country, that means that you had to know these Western scholars. And this was what constitutes cultural literacy. And I think that we need to reject that entire paradigm of cultural literacy. Because cultural literacy now is developing culture responsive practices, which is what teachers can do, which is le what Libertad is doing when she works with students. And that is looking at each student as an individual in your classroom exactly. and finding mm -hmm. out what are and he helping them become more aware of what is their it's historical, exactly. their cultural, their linguistic, their ethnic, and their national backgrounds. Exactly. There was some work that was done in Chicago where the teachers, what they did is they had the kids interview their own parents. These mm -hmm. were newly arrived from Mexico, almost all of them. And the kids interviewed their parents when they came across, why they came across. 
And it was a whole, uh, it, w it was what the article was saying, it was just a whole new understanding for the kids because they hadn't even understood what the parents had suffered in coming over to give them this opportunity. They hadn't understood that. So by having, and then what they did is they had a big, a big show so that the other groups could understand all the different ways that people literally where they were coming I, from. I mean, yes, Alex? literally where they came from. Yeah, a, a couple of things. Uh, my, I'm the only one here that's not some sort of an expert. I, uh, I'm an ordinary person. My point of view really is just... But you've got a great suit. Well, mm -hmm. I, so, I, I, an ordinary person... But you're person. representing an organization <laughs> that has a very specific point of view. Oh, no, and I joined that, but mm -hmm. I had the point of view before I joined the group. Mm -hmm. I didn't get indoctrinated. But, but my expertise came by doing my research, not through education, no, not no, that, through the that, university. I understand that. Okay. No, I understand that. But my point of view is someone who was born and raised in Los Angeles. I have grown up with all of this. I've seen the good. I've seen the bad. We've lost some good things, and we've gained some good things. I'm comfortable with the good things we have gained. Now, I'm not Anglo. I don't come from old money. I come from old poverty. That's why my people came here, too. Old poverty. Like many of them. That, that's true. Yeah. Okay. There was, it was terrible back where they came from. That's why they left. That's, that's why, why they left. came here. And I understand that completely. So I've always been kind of in the middle on this. And my point of view is not to hold anybody down or hold anybody back because I'm totally comfortable with the variety. All I want to do is see that some people with an attitude or an axe to grind don't go too far and undermine okay. everything that keeps that us together done. and makes this work. And that is that's my whole That's why I say it's, it's a healing that's taught necessary. To children. It's a unity. What's been taught to children, and we say we, be, we want to teach children multiculturalism. Okay, and I know this because I work with these children, and I see that this ch a child can respect someone that's from Asian descent. Mm -hmm. a, a child can respect someone who's African, who's Anglo-Saxon. But when a child comes to respecting someone of his or her own culture, that's where the problem starts because you have little children that don't understand that being brown-skinned is beautiful, that speaking Spanish is fine. And that's where those, where those textbooks go into having problems, because those, textbook, those textbooks talk, talk about, you know... Even the, the new textbooks? Yeah, the new textbooks. Even the new textbooks. The new, the, new the, te the new textbooks go in it and talk about Okay, the 13 colonies, George Washington. Well, that's important Abraham history, though. Yeah, yeah no, I'm not saying it's talking about westward. Okay, but it talks, about westward. Okay, it talks okay. about westward. The whole fifth grade curriculum is about westward expansion. And it's, a, again, and that's, that's west, what west. Wait, wait, it's westward expansion. But never once does it mention that there were already people on those lands that they were expanding. It they never were being expanded upon. Yeah, it never talks about, it never talks about the war between, the war, it never talks about the war between Mexico and the United States. Oh, I can, it, I can, answer, I can yeah. answer that problem, because I just had attended several of the, the whole uh, Treaty of Guadalupe. Thank and you for what, joining us. We'll be back next Sunday on Cafe California. Please okay. continue. Okay, Maybe. what they had said, and these were um, someone from Mexico, podría usted comprar con 1250. 35 millones de personas lo invierten en una membresía con AARP. Y con esos 1250 al año, obtienen acceso a descuentos y muchos beneficios, como servicios legales y financieros, oportunidades para trabajar como voluntario y asistencia gratis en la preparación de sus impuestos. Llame, infórmese, hágase miembro y recibirá gratis un ejemplar de Segunda Juventud.